China's Ministry of State Security is recruiting young spies. The only problem is, they're not telling them they're spies. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Toolbox. Monitor your PC for software crashes, hardware failures, and the kind of glitches that make your life miserable. So, if you're a China Uncensored viewer, you probably know there's not much difference in China between private companies and companies owned by the government. Almost all companies in China must have a branch of the Chinese Communist Party. Here's one at ByteDance. That's the Chinese company that owns TikTok. And by law, Chinese companies have to cooperate with state intelligence agencies. That means any data that companies have access to, the Chinese regime also has access to. That's true for so-called private companies, as well as state-owned enterprises. But there's another kind of company in China that has an even cozier relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Government front companies. These companies are set up to look like regular companies, but are actually created by and for the Chinese Communist Party. They're for things like paying bribes, laundering money, and spying. You know, everyday government business. Take Hainan Xiandun Technology Development Corporation. It looks like a tech company, but it's actually tasked with hacking foreign governments, schools, and companies. The company was set up on Hainan Island, the southernmost province of China. Now, it's well known that the Chinese Communist Party recruits students and academics to spy in other countries. But what makes this company unique is that it seems to have been luring graduate job seekers into digital espionage without telling them what they're doing. Job adverts from the company were posted on university websites for translators without further explanation of the nature of the work. The Financial Times contacted 140 of its recruits. One said a recruiter had asked him to go beyond conventional translation duties by researching the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. He was asked to find things like resumes of its board of directors, info about the building's architecture, and details of their research contracts. Which is especially interesting because this lab does a lot of research for the U.S. Department of Defense. Hmm. So this is a totally normal test for a translation job, right? But hey, at least the job pays well. The company paid monthly salaries of $1,200 to $3,000, solid middle-class wages for Chinese tech workers fresh out of college, with bonuses as high as $15,000. $15,000 bonuses, not bad. Especially with China's job market tanking right now. I'm sure it looked like a pretty good gig. There were a few red flags about the company, though, like the fact that it doesn't have a website, and that its address was the ground floor of a university library. Also, the company's job postings were almost identical to multiple other technology companies in Hainan. According to Intrusion Truth, a blog that exposes Chinese hackers, Hainan Shandun is part of a network of Chinese front companies used for state-sponsored hacking. Intrusion Truth has made a sport of unmasking Chinese front companies, and they've found quite a few. They call this network of front companies in Hainan Advanced Persistent Threat, or APT-40. And they say APT-40 is run by the Hainan Department of the Chinese Ministry of State Security, or MSS. According to an expert on Chinese intelligence operations, these state-sponsored hacking companies that hire unsuspecting grads are unique to China. It adds another layer of cover for the MSS, both from their citizens, but also from foreign governments. It also provides a steady flow of cheap labor that doesn't require security clearances. And it's not just translators. The Chinese Communist Party is also reaching into the private sector to hire hackers as well. While the Ministry of State Security projects an image of remorseless loyalty to the Communist Party in Beijing, its hacking operations can act like local franchises. So like McDonald's, but for hacking. I wonder if their ice cream machines work. More after the break. Welcome back. Hopefully not from a black screen, but unfortunately, we do get demonetized a lot. 
That's why we rely heavily on support from the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. That's what we call fans of the show who support us on the crowdfunding website Patreon or our exclusive social media platform on Locals. Links to both are in the description below. So, Hainan Xiandu, a fake technology company on the Chinese island of Hainan, was recruiting translators from Chinese universities. What it didn't tell applicants, at least up front, was that they were being hired for espionage. Once they got to the application process, though, they were tested on sensitive documents obtained from the U.S. government. One applicant told the Financial Times that at this point it became very clear that this was not a translation company and decided not to continue his application. We don't know if or when applicants were told what the company really did. But if they were hired and not told what they would be doing, this could have huge consequences. If they're flagged as having worked with MSS, they may not be able to ever live or work abroad. Imagine studying English for years and then never being able to go to America because you applied for a job that tricked you into spying. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party claims this recruitment drive never happened. The spokesperson also accused the Financial Times of being a mouthpiece for the U.S. and the U.K. intelligence agencies. Right. That's the problem here. So how widespread is this problem? Last year, the U.S. government indicted four Chinese nationals who were connected to Hainan Xiandun. Three of them were officers of the Hainan State Security Department, the local branch of the MSS. The indictment charged them with hacking companies around the world for intellectual property and business secrets. No one was arrested because they were all in China. But the U.S. government's actions fully exposed Hainan Xiandun as a front company for the APT-40 hacking group. According to cybersecurity company Mandiant, APT40 also tried to interfere in Cambodia's 2018 election. This included hacking Cambodian government entities that oversaw elections as well as opposition figures. I'm sure it was just a coincidence that Hainan Chiandun was hiring Cambodian translators right before the election. The U.S. government says that Hainan Chiandun has been disbanded, but it's not clear what that means. The South China Morning Post called the company several times after the indictment, and each time someone hung up. There's also no immediate response to emailed questions. But even if Hainan Xiandun is gone, the MSS still has a lot of other front companies they can use to do their dirty work. At least one of the APT40 companies was still posting job ads even after the FBI indictment. As of March, Hainan Tung Yuan was still posting job ads for English translators. Look, I know that times are tough out there for Chinese graduates, but if you start getting sensitive U.S. government documents to translate, maybe think twice about taking that job. And this episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Toolbox. There are many reasons your computer crashes, like buggy software, hardware failures, and general slowdowns with older computers. And the worst part is your computer always seems to crash at the worst time, like when you're about to give a presentation or when you're on the road and there's no IT person around to help. Fortunately, there's PC Doctor Toolbox with remote monitoring. If you're concerned about the health of your computer and want tools to prevent untimely system issues, you should be using PC Doctor Toolbox. Stop crashes before they happen. And we have a special announcement for China Uncensored viewers. Toolbox is now free for personal use on up to five PCs with free remote monitoring. Use the link below to sign up and download your five free copies of Toolbox today. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.